So, you know, John Kasich, with what he's done, and, and Republicans for a while have been leading this state, do you think that they're on the right path, or do you think that we need to make some stark changes? So I think when you have one party rule, uh, it's not good for the public, and that's what we've had in Columbus for the last number of years. You have a deeply gerrymandered legislature that I think is holding this state back, uh, and you have a legislature that has been backward on health care, backward on education. We've also seen sloppy, complacent government that includes some corrupt government. The charter school scandal, where they stole $189 million from Ohio taxpayers. You know, that should not have been allowed to happen, but it did. We had a Speaker of the House who had to resign because of payday lending lobbyists and a scandal over legislation there. That should not have been able to happen. We need more checks and balances in Columbus, and that's going to be Rich Cordray and Betty Sutton this year. You, you mentioned uh, the ECAP scandal. Uh, Education-wise, there's been a lot of talk on charter schools, public funding. Where do you, where do you come out on all that? Where, what do you think the best thing is for, for the youth of Ohio? Well, for the youth and the taxpayers of Ohio, you have to hold charter schools accountable. If they're succeeding, great, but if they're failing, put them out of business and get that money reallocated back into the classroom. We've been very slow to do that uh, in this state for, for the last several years. Uh, in addition, I think that we need to reduce the unfunded mandates on the classroom, give teachers more latitude to teach students, uh, and get the magic that is education of inspiring children and, and helping them along without all this overhang of high pressure st standardized testing, which has gotten very heavy in the state of Ohio and I think is not the right direction for this state. What do you think the biggest issue is facing Ohio right now? I think clearly health care has risen to the top as the most important issue on most people's minds around the state. Uh, I have said that we will work to bring down health care costs and ensure more reliable coverage for more Ohioans. Mike DeWine has shown, while he's been the Attorney General, that he is willing to use the power of the state to take people's health care away, take away coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. That's what he did as Attorney General of this state, and it's a fundamental difference between us. Do you, do you like the Affordable Care Act? Do you think that's the best uh, solution, or is that just kind of the, the best of all the scenarios now and would like to continue looking at something else? or? Well, it's the only law that we've ever had that has actually protected people who have a pre-existing condition from not being knocked off their insurance coverage or having their premiums jacked up sky high when they get sick or diagnosed with a condition. And that's what a true insurance system should be about. Yet Mike DeWine has been against that from the beginning. He'll say it was from other reasons, but he doesn't have a plan to protect anybody with pre-existing conditions. If he really cared about that, he could be in the lawsuit right now in Texas protecting people, but he won't do it. So to say something in a campaign where your record is completely contrary to that isn't very credible, I think, for most Ohioans. Would you say that's maybe the biggest uh, difference between, if you had to pick, like, this is the biggest, if you, you vote DeWine, you get this, or you vote Cordray, you get this, what do you think the biggest stark contrast for, the, for both of you is? Well, I, th I think there's, there's broader issues here. I think the pre-existing condition is a good example of it. But Mike DeWine has always stood with the big corporate interests. They bankroll his campaigns. The insurance and drug companies wanted him to oppose coverage for people with pre-existing conditions, so that's what he did. I've always taken on the special interests. When I was Attorney General, I fought Wall Street to bring back money for our pension systems. I then fought for consumers against the big banks in Washington uh, and got back money for people. That's a contrast between us. I also think that when you look at this race, Betty Sutton and Rich Corday are going to step into the future of this state, and Mike DeWine represents a continuation of a status quo that is really facing backwards to the past. And I think that people in Ohio want to be ready to step into the future this year, and they want change. Uh, you talk about the future. One of the things that we're looking at uh, that's on the ballot that could potentially change the future is uh, issue one. You've been kind of out there saying, you know, you're for this, and you've almost been on an island a little bit. There's, uh, you know, some Democrats that are, are not for What is it about issue one that you think is, is definitely the, the way and direction for the state? Actually, there's a lot of people who've been supporting issue one and a lot of people opposing issue one. It's a constitutional amendment on the ballot. People will vote for it or against it, uh, and then we will move forward. Uh, I'm just one vote among many. But Newt Gingrich and the Teachers Association and SEIU and a number of others have supported this measure. Now, in terms of issue one, let's think about crime in Ohio because the opioid crisis has been the biggest crime issue of this generation. And Mike DeWine has been a dismal failure for the state of Ohio in the opioid crisis. The death toll continues to mount. He's been the chief law enforcement officer. He hasn't been able to get a handle on this. Fentanyl in particular has devastated our communities. Drug cartels, law enforcement has reported, have flooded Ohio with fentanyl. The death toll has gone from 70 a year, 70, 
a year when I was Attorney General to 3,431 last year under Mike DeWine. So we need to crack down on drug dealers, get fentanyl, drive it out of Ohio, and then get more money into community treatment in Ohio so we can help people with the drug dependency get off drugs, solve this problem once and for all. Also that will have to do with getting money back from Columbus to our local communities for services, opioid addiction services, mental health services. That hasn't been happening uh, in the last few years, but it needs to happen. Give me one thing that you've seen about yourself on these ads or, or what that you think is just total misconception, lacks information. What's the, if there was one thing that you could just go with, uh, with a, a marker and go, no, this, this isn't me. What, what is it? What do you keep hearing that you think is... Well, look, what we know is what we've seen from Mike DeWine is after 42 years in politics, he's incapable of running anything other than a negative campaign. He doesn't have a record he can run on. He doesn't have a vision for the future of this state. So that's a fundamental difference uh, right there. But the other piece is that uh, what he knows is that I am tougher on crime and more effective on crime. The law enforcement community has said so. They're supporting Rich Cordray in this race, not Mike DeWine. Fraternal or police... Patrolman's Association, they know us best, they've worked with us both, and they know that I'll be more effective than he will. So, you know, I think that that's a fundamental important uh, fact about this campaign. So you're, you're tough on crime. That's the thing that they're kind of saying that you're saying, no, I'm, I'm tough on crime. They're, they're making this up. Look, there, there's a lot of things that are being uh, made up in these ads, including the notion that somehow uh, Ohio was unique in losing jobs back 10 years ago when we suffered a national recession. Millions of jobs were lost around the country. Uh, what I have is I have an economic program that's going to benefit Ohio and spread out opportunity across the state, supporting small businesses, firing up our infrastructure, getting money back into local communities, and providing better workforce development so that we close the skills gap with our workers in this state. Those are the things that are going to move Ohio fundamentally forward. That's a positive vision for the state. That's what I'm running on, and Mike DeWine lacks that vision. Uh, one thing that's been in the news big time recently with the Pittsburgh shooting we, we have it here locally in Chardon with the school shooting guns. There was a, a girl that was walking around Kent State with a, with a gun on her back, kind of proclaiming like you know her right to, to bear arms. So that's kind of been a hot button issue for a while, not just in Ohio but nationally. Where do you stand on guns as far as uh, background checks? This is um, this gun's okay. That gun's not okay. Where, where does Cordray stand? Well, we need to improve school safety in this state. Everybody knows that. It's a great anxiety for young people and their parents. And I'm, my wife and I are parents of, of uh, uh, children who are just, just out of their teen years. So you, you feel that, you see that. But we also need to do some common sense things to restrict guns from the hands of criminals and the mentally ill and domestic violence abusers. That's something we should move forward in the state. And I'm for doing that. My opponent is against it. Even common sense measures like that, these are things that we can do and we should do in Ohio to stem the, the gun violence that's ravaging many of our communities. If you learned one thing from your past, because you kind of have a little bit more of a windy road, uh, as you were in the private law sector, you know, you bounced around, what's the one lesson that you've maybe learned in your run up here uh, to make this run as governor that you hang your hat on? Yeah, I think fundamentally a lot of what happens in these positions is as a leader, who do you stand up to and who do you stand up for? And I have stood up for the middle class and working class in Ohio, protected our pension systems here against Wall Street, protected consumers against the big banks and big financial companies who cheat them or mistreat them. That's my record. Mike DeWine, on the other hand, has a record of standing up for the big corporate interests. They have bankrolled his campaigns. He stood on their side whenever push has come to shove, even when they were against the interests of Ohioans, like taking away people's health care or cutting protection for people with pre-existing conditions. I think who you stand up to and who you stand up for tells a lot about what kind of leadership you'll bring to the state over the next four years. If you were to lose this race, Give me one thing that you could say good about the person you're running against, Mr. DeWine. Well, look, I think we have fundamental disagreements on the issues, and people need to vote uh, how we can move this state forward. I think we're both good family mem men. We both uh, uh, respect and, and appreciate our families, and I respect that about him, and I think he respects it about me. Uh, but in terms of direction of this state, there's, there's big differences and a, a yawning gap between us in terms of he'll stand up for the big corporate interests, I'll stand up for the working middle class people of this state. 